Guten Tag, and welcome to the Military Tutorial Part 3, Take 4, on Barracks and Training. I wanted to cover this along with the alerts and schedules in the same video, but it's simply impossible to do so in a reasonable amount of time. Instead, we'll visit those menus for the purpose of training dwarves, and that's all for now. The next video should cover them in much more detail. Training is paramount to an effective military. You can't count on actual combat to provide all of the experience your dwarves need to become fierce and effective warriors, especially since the game doesn't promise to scale conflicts from easy to hard in a predictable manner. No, not at all. You may end up facing down a gelatinous crustacean abomination that spits acid and farts necrosis much sooner than you expect. Lucky for you, training dwarves is quick and easy. In fact, you don't even need to get too involved in how exactly you train your dwarves, as long as they're scheduled to train and given a barracks to train in. Oh, and a weapon too, preferably. So let's cover the barracks first. I really don't want to go straight into the military menu again. The barracks is a room, the same category as dining rooms and bedrooms. To create one, you press Q and then highlight an appropriate piece of furniture. In the case of the barracks, you have quite a few options. A bed, cabinet, chest or other container, armor stand or weapon rack can all be used to designate a barracks. A quick tip here, in the past there's been a bug where designating a barracks from a bed makes that bed unavailable for sleeping. I did an experiment myself and found that a bed, made into a bedroom and then into a barracks, did work for sleeping. Though, to prevent any funny business, I tend to always designate my barracks from a weapon rack or an armor stand. Once the furniture is highlighted, you can press R to create a barracks. In the case of a bed, you first press R to make a bedroom, then B to make that bedroom also a barracks. You'll be able to size the room like any other with the plus and minus keys. Pressing enter creates the barracks and its options will appear on the right. The first option, which I always implore people to use, is to name the barracks with control N. You can also assign the barracks to a dwarf with A like you would a bedroom. I have no idea what this would accomplish besides perhaps providing a noble with their armor stand or weapon rack requirements. Of course it's easy enough to build their own, so this option is mostly pointless. F will free the room, which simply means delete it. R brings you back to the sizing of the room with the plus and minus keys in case you want to resize it. The rest of the options is where the magic happens. So not every barracks is used the same way necessarily. You can make different kinds of barracks. One might store personal things, store squad equipment, be used for training or for sleeping or any combination of those. The way to define how a barracks gets used is here in its options. Using the plus and minus keys, you can highlight your various squads. You're choosing which squad will use this barracks. Then you can press Z, T, I, and Q to describe how this squad will use the barracks. For example, pressing Z will instruct the highlighted squad to use the barracks for sleeping, at least when scheduled to sleep in a barracks. More on scheduling in the next video. I and Q instruct the squad members to store their personal and squad equipment in the barracks. Now because of a bug, this currently doesn't work and barracks will not store equipment. And also because of that bug, I'm not exactly sure which equipment is personal and which is squad. I imagine anything a squad member would store in their bedroom is personal equipment, and anything else is squad equipment. But who knows, since the bug prevents anything from being stored anyway. Most important to us today is pressing T to instruct that squad to train here. Notice the letters appearing to the right of the squad indicating how they're using this barracks. Also, notice that more than one squad can use this barracks in any of these ways. Multiple squads training in the same barracks doesn't necessarily require double the space, but multiple squads sleeping in the barracks or using it for storage will require more beds or containers. The reason for needing extra beds or containers is that dwarves won't share them. In fact, each bed, container, or cabinet is assigned to a specific squad position. After pressing Q from the main screen and highlighting a bed or container in the barracks, you'll find an option to press P and view or change which position gets this furniture. 
If multiple squads use that type of furniture in the same barracks, for example if multiple squads are sleeping here, and you highlight a bed, then you'll first pick which squad and then see which positions might own this bed. Otherwise you'll go straight to the positions list. Here you can use the plus and minus keys to highlight a position and press enter to select which position owns that furniture. Remember that positions own that furniture, not specific dwarves. So if a dwarf gets moved to a new position in the squad, it will get moved to that position's bed. There is no need to reassign furniture if a dwarf is killed or newly added to the squad. The new dwarf will take whichever bed or container their position gets. This might all seem like useless tedium, but it actually does allow for an enormous amount of flexibility in barracks designs and how your military is arranged physically in your fort. We'll look at some possibilities near the end of this video. Before that, we want to get a squad actually training here. We have the fun police instructed to train in this barracks, but we don't have them instructed to train right now, or ever actually, because they aren't scheduled for it. The behavior of a squad is defined as a schedule, and by default all squads follow the inactive schedule. This means they aren't told to do anything related to the military. They're essentially off-duty, and while some dwarves might opt to train in their spare time, they'll often be found doing civilian jobs or getting drunk in the tavern with a goblin poet instead. So let's change that and get the fun police on a training schedule. We'll have to finally enter the military menu once again with M. Now before we look at schedules, we have to look at alerts. Alerts are one of the submenus, accessed by pressing A. So what is an alert? Well, that's the question that forced me to toss three scripts before following through with this video, and we aren't going to answer it today. All we need to know is that the active slash training alert will put any squad assigned to it on a constant training schedule. Like other military submenus, the arrow keys will navigate the middle section, while hotkeys can be found up top. All we need to do today is first highlight the active slash training alert, and then highlight the fun police, or whichever squads you intend to train. Then pressing enter assigns that squad to the alert, indicated by a green A to the right of the squad's name. What we've done here is told this squad to be on this alert. The alert contains a schedule for each squad, and when assigned to it, a squad will follow their own schedule within. This default alert, called active slash training, contains the same schedule for all squads, and that is to train the entire squad on every month of the year. This isn't going to cause the dwarves to starve to death, because they will stop to fulfill their needs, but it will weigh down their moods. So without going into too much detail, we'll visit the schedule menu just once today to make adjustments to their training regimen. Pressing S will take us to the schedule menu. Right away you'll notice that this doesn't look like the submenus we've seen so far. That's because it's actually not a submenu of the military menu. It's kind of its own thing. You can't even go back to the other submenus with the usual keys. You have to press escape to exit from here. The organization is a bit different. First, there's this line all the way up at the tippy top showing us which alert we're modifying. You'll need to make sure that this is the active slash training alert, and you can change it with the forward slash and asterisk keys, otherwise known as the divide and multiply keys. So what exactly is going on here? Well, this big ol' grid here is showing us what each squad is scheduled to do on each month. The y-axis is months, the x-axis is squads, the cells are the orders. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's for the next video. For now, we just want to give our squad a little time off to pursue personal goals and keep their moods up. We might also want to alternate which squads are training. If we have them sharing a barracks for training, then it could make sense to have them train on different months. I'm not sure there's any actual effect or benefit of doing it this way, but I prefer it because it makes sense to my obsessive brain. Also, without knowing any better, I suspect training two squads with different weapons in the same barracks may generate cross-training of weapon types via demonstrations, for better or worse. Don't quote me on that though, maybe someone can comment on whether different squads training in the same place will interact in such a way. Anyway, to modify when our squads train in the simplest way, we navigate the cells of the grid with the arrow keys and press X to cancel a training order. You can also copy and paste a training order from another cell without having to make one from scratch, with C and P. To make our squads train at different times in the same barracks, we simply remove alternating months of training from each squad, like this. 
If each squad has their own barracks, we don't need alternating schedules. Instead, we can just delete every fourth training order to have three months out of the year during which the squad members can relax, fraternize, or perform civilian jobs. Keep in mind that this modifies only what this specific squad does under the active slash training alert. Other squads will follow their own schedule when assigned to this same alert. Newly created squads will be given the default schedule for this alert regardless of what changes we made so far, so you will need to return here to modify a new squad schedule if you don't want them training all year round. And that's all we have to do here today. We've modified the schedule for our squad within the alert that we use for training. We've assigned that squad to the alert so they'll follow this modified schedule, and we've provided a barracks that they're told to use for training. At this point, Dwarves in this squad will come to the barracks and train whichever weapon they have equipped or wrestling if they have none according to their schedule without further input from us. Now we can brainstorm and think up some interesting and creative ideas. Specifically, how to organize a military in a fort. There's a lot of flexibility here thanks to the ability to assign positions to furniture how we saw before. So let's take a look at a couple reasonable examples and get a little wild and unnecessary with one more. Oh, and we'll just skip over each squad having their own one barracks, which is where they do everything. That's a pretty obvious solution, and not very inspired. We'll start with a shared training barracks, but individual sleeping barracks per squad. The four sleeping barracks will be surrounding the main training room. Equipment will be ignored because of the aforementioned bug. Schedules for training will alternate, with one squad training for three months, then the other for three months, and so on. Again, alternating training like that may be of no practical benefit, but it's pretty neat, so yeah. Another example is to have a massive sleeping barracks for all squads, with several training barracks attached to it and an armory across the hall. Each squad gets its own training barracks, tailored to the preferences of the squad members, since they'll be spending a lot of time here. Also, it would only make sense to have the furniture manually assigned to positions in some arrangement else it's just chaos in the sleeping quarters. And as for the armory, well, that's just decoration, since that bug prevents anything from being stored here. Now let's go crazy and have a training barracks for every squad, as well as a hall behind each, beset by individual bedrooms for each squad member, and a fancier one for the captain. The armories will be attached to the training rooms. Each bedroom is designated as a bedroom first and then as a barracks, and each must have not only the appropriate squad instructed to sleep there, but its furniture all assigned to the same position, particularly the captain's room having its furniture assigned, of course, to the captain. Also, the bedrooms will store individual equipment, while the armory stores squad equipment. Again, the equipment is bugged, but honestly, this is a waste of space, time, and sanity anyway, and I don't recommend it. Still seems cool, I guess. And that's about it for getting squads into a barracks to train their skills and get ready for battle against a surprise rock, titan, or giant poison vomiting skinless cave dinosaur. Well, actually the most important note has not been made yet. That is that you cannot train marks dwarves in a barracks. If assigned to train in a barracks, a crossbow wielding dwarf will confuse their weapon for an exotic club and train melee instead. You need archery targets to train marks dwarves, a video for another day. Stay tuned for an in-depth look at perhaps the most complicated single part of military management, and maybe the most confusing single thing in all of Dwarf Fortress, coming up next in part 4. I'll see you then, assuming that the constant state of internal rage it has entrapped me in doesn't boil over and send me berserking through the neighborhood naked beating up people's pets.